Hello! Welcome to Humboldt Redwood State Park's Facebook page. I think, I hope I'm on here. My goodness. This is Griff. And I'm in Humboldt Redwood State Park. Oh, I can see myself. Let me fix my hat. Welcome to this beautiful, warm, hot June day. Or this overcast, cold, windy, about to rain day. Which is what's really going on. How are you guys doing? We are several weeks into the months into the pandemic now and um, state parks has opened trails for day use and day use parking and we are going to announce further steps to opening reopening and when people come here and they keep their social distance and they wear their masks and stuff like that when they're getting too close to each other it really helps us uh, push that date closer so thanks for those of you who are doing a great job of social distancing today we're going to talk about another cool tree in the red in the modern redwood assemblage so remember from previous um facebook live um and i have to hold i have to hold the phone because my gimbal quit remember from previous facebook live when we talked about assemblages so assemblage is like a group of plants and animals that live you know in a in a forest together or desert together or an ecosystem together so redwoods have had a lot of different assemblages because they've been on the planet for millions of years okay and they've had huge animals underneath their canopies they've had all kinds of different plants under their canopies they've been through many many different climates and to and spread across the world or at least the northern hemisphere two-thirds of the northern hemisphere until they shrank and shrank and shrank and now just exist the sequoias and bavirons anyways now just exist in a slender part of california and barely into oregon and maples joined um redwoods probably you know tens of millions of years ago so they're newcomers but anyways maples are super cool write down something you know that's cool about maples if anybody is on here uh i haven't seen any likes or hearts or hellos yet so if you're on let me know you're on and write something that you know about maples that you think is really cool and i'll tell you what i know about maples that is really cool okay so we are going to go through an ecotone right now so ecotone if you remember from previous uh facebook lives and you know what? if you haven't seen the previous facebook lives or you don't want to scroll through a bunch of facebook to find them you can go to our youtube channel north coast redwood districts youtube channel North Coast Redwood District's YouTube channel. And you can see all the Facebook Lives we've done, okay? There's like six of us interpreters have been doing them. And so you could uh, get on there and you could watch them anytime at your leisure, okay? But today, we're gonna talk about maples. So right now we're in an ecotone, which means two ecosystems coming together. And it's usually where there's the highest amount of biodiversity Biodiversity is variety of life, so there's more, usually more stuff because there's we're going into the riparian ecosystem, riparian habitat. So riparian means plant and animal, plant and animal water loving communities. So like riverside, lakeside forest, riparian forest. So I know I'm dropping a lot of big words on you guys, but if you watch enough of these, you will sound like a biologist or an interpreter yourself, nature guide. So we have the bay laurels. Remember them from a previous. Facebook Live, we got the redwoods. So these are all, you know, we got redwood plants here. So we're going through the redwoods. We're going down to a trail through the redwoods. But if you look out over there, you can start to see it gets lighter green. And that lighter green is the riparian forest. So the riparian forest is full of different kinds of plants. And one of those plants, in fact, this riparian forest is dominated by maples in this section. Sometimes they're dominated by willows, sometimes they're dominated by cottonwoods, sometimes by alders, sometimes by sycamores, at least in California. But this one, this space right here on the South Fork of the Eel River is dominated by maples. And that's really cool because maples are really cool. So here's our last few redwood trees and we're getting more maples. So you can start to see these light green broadleaf trees. Those are maples. And so here we go, a couple more redwoods here. And now getting less and less redwoods and more. So that big tree right there, that's a maple. So we're starting to get the maples now, bigger maples. And maples are really cool. And here's a bunch of baby maples. So see all those little green plants right there? Those are baby ma maples. Maples are very prolific seeders and their young can grow very fast. They can even out outgrow a lot of the conifers and the, first few years 
and they just grow and grow and grow and we'll talk about how cool they are there's a maple leaf so here's a sign so big leaf maples have the biggest leaves of the maple hence the name big leaf maple and they're beautiful they're they can get up to like 12 inches across i believe and they're super uh good for wrapping stuff in fact a lot of the first nations people wrap stuff in them including salmon and maples, one of the ways you can recognize them, even here, this is a little bit drier of a redwood forest than a lot of redwood forests, but maples are always covered in epiphytes. So here's another big word. So there's a licorice fern growing out of the bark. Here's a bunch of moss growing out of the bark. So maple bark is fissured, meaning it's got like lots of places where, it's not slick, so it's got lots of places where you can like set up your little aerial roots, your adventitious roots. And these are not parasitic plants. These are epiphytic plants. Epi means upon, phytic means plant. And when you go to wetter redwood forests, like in Prairie Creek, or even a Rockefeller forest not far from here, um, the moss is even thicker and can house a bunch of insects and even some amphibians. So they're like vertical condominiums, like vertical, that's not good sunlight, vertical condominiums, you know, it's just like habitat all the way up, a vertical com column of habitat. How wonderful is that? And that happens in this forest like it happens in tropical forests, epiphytic plants. And in their bark, also, their bark is really high in calcium, so it's great for these epiphytic plants because they can get nutrients from the bark itself without being parasitic. Thank you, maples, for being so cool. So, maples can live up to 200 years, which isn't long in the redwoods, and these are all maples we're looking at now. And they can get up to 100 feet tall. And they can get their crown can get almost 100 feet wide. So they are great creators of shade during the summer. They're deciduous, winter deciduous. And deciduous means loses their leaves. Lots of definitions, huh? lots of words. I don't even know if anybody's on here because I haven't seen a single heart. Um, oh, look at that. Someone's been chewing on that. And see how it's not a clean cut? See how it looks like it's been dragged? I just learned from Kim Cabrera, the uh, bear tracker, that that's one way you can tell that it's a deer because deer, like have teeth on one side that just kind of scrape it off. And then a, a rabbit would be a much cleaner break. That's also too high for a rabbit. But these are all maple trees. There's 128 species of maples and 54 of them are going um, extinct. Most of them are in the Northern Hemisphere. There's one in the Southern Hemisphere and they've been around for a long, long time. So here's another maple. Look, look at all this moss. So you can just find these trees. If you see tons of moss growing on a tree, in uh, the redwoods, chances are it's a maple tree. So it gets thicker up here. And people are like, does it grow on the north side? No, no, not here. On here, the moss grows on all sides. So don't use that directional clue if you get lost because you'll be going in circles right around the maple, around the maypole. That was actually the original name of maple trees was maypole. And if it has a relationship to the maypole, I don't know. I should have looked that up before I turned on the video, but I didn't. So if you know that, you can put it in there. So how do you guys mostly know maples? Pancakes, maple syrup. So that's the sugar maple. So that maple grows like in Canada and Northeast United States where it's cold enough to get the maple syrup from. You can make maple syrup out of big leaf maples too if it's growing in a cold enough place, but it would take a lot more sap to make the syrup because you gotta boil it down and it wouldn't be as sweet, uh, which is why you haven't had big leaf maple syrup before. Maybe you have, if you have, let me know how it was. I would be interested in trying some. So, one of the really cool things about maples is their seeds. Their seeds are pretty cool. And if you've ever been around maples, you've probably played with their seeds because their seeds look like, it's starting to get really windy here. You know, it's June and everything. So it's always windy and cold in June. No, it's not. It's usually hot. And I don't know what's going on with this June. But here's the maple seed. See, there's two seeds there. This is called a double Samara. And when you throw this, it does this like whirling thing, like helicopter. It's really cool. And you won't be able to see it because I've been trying to get that on camera. And on this phone, it doesn't work. But that whirling motion inspired engineers in World War II because they were dropping, they were air dropping stuff out of planes and it was smashing or the parachute was giving away its location. And so they wanted something that was safe and a little bit more discreet. So they developed airdrops that were designed after maple seeds. And so they went 
on the way down and the cargo didn't get destroyed and it wasn't as obvious as parachutes. And we still use those today. I think they're called pums and we use those, some companies use those to um, take humanitarian relief to remote areas um, for the same reasons that they used them in World War II. So maples, maples are very, very cool plants. In fact, they're even on the flag of Canada it has a maple leaf, that's how cool they are. How many other leaves are on the flags? Do you know? Maple leaves are, that's how you know they're really cool. So I mentioned that 54 of the 128 species of maples are going um, extinct, which is awful. And you can help mitigate that uh, one, just by supporting your local parks and preserves and reserves, because, you know, if you're in California, Oregon, Washington, uh, they probably have maples in them if they're wet enough. Um, but they're going to have your native plants in there that are important. So supporting land conservancies and conservation groups that help protect land and save land is really helpful because we have 7 billion of us now. There's 1 billion of us in 1900. There's 7 billion now. And people want hamburgers and cows are like one of the major causes of land conversion. Not just for the cows themselves, but also for the crops we've got to grow to feed the cows because they eat a lot more than we do. Okay, so that's a lot of land clearance. Um, and also, in the tropics, they're, they're clearing land for palm oil. And in North America, we're building cities, and so we're clearing a lot of land. And so we need to keep some habitat, some wildlife habitat, and we need to keep it connected through a series of networks. Even over our freeways, we can have wildlife corridors and stuff like that. You can plant maples on top of it if it's wet enough. And that way we can keep our beautiful inheritance and all the tools and medicines and happiness that we get from nature. We can keep them all together. And supporting uh, land conservancies like Save the Redwood League uh, helps do that. Or local ones like North Coast Land Trust is the local land trust around here. So please do stuff like that. If you live within the range of the maple tree, you can even plant a big maple tree in your yard. So thank you very much for in, uh for coming around. If you would like to share, please share these videos with people who you think might be interested. I don't even know if anybody's seen this video because um, there's not been one single comment or heart or like or anything. It's really making me curious. So thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget we have North Coast Redwood District's uh, YouTube channel that you can check out. All right. Talk to you later.